Hello there and welcome friends! This is a guide with everything you need to know about the most powerful craftables in Elden Ring and trust me, there's quite a lot of them in the game as to help you overcome even the toughest of enemies and bosses. For example, you have craftables that can inflict nasty debuffs and crowd control bosses in duo or trio battles, consumables that directly enhance all of your damage, no matter the source, and of course, Items that let even your lightly armored character become a full-scale iron tank, to the point you can even face tank the toughest of enemies with little effort. So without further ado, let us get started, and first with the best debuffing and crowd control consumables. But just as a quick note, don't forget to actually craft items, you have to first buy the crafting kit from the merchant at the Church of Ele, north of the starter area. Alright, so first we have the freezing pot. When you throw this at the enemy, it will deal a very high amount of frost buildup. Against most enemies, they'll get hit with frostbite with just a single pot. For enemies that are resistant to it, like Malekath, you'll take around 2 pots. Frostbite is an extremely nasty debuff that not only deals around 10% of the enemy's health when first procced, but most importantly, also increases the damage they take from every single source by 20%. This can really add up, take Godric here for example, and also Melania, you can see a noticeable increase to damage taken. Last but not least, the Freezing Pot also has another very powerful effect, it can actually stagger enemies when inflicted with Frostbite. The most infamous example is against Melania, so you know her special, extremely overpowered Waterfall Dance, you can actually stagger her out of it by just throwing a Freezing Pot at her. That's how powerful this pot can be. This will work even if she's already starting her slashes, as you can see here. To get the freezing pot, you first have to find the Glintstone Craftsman Cookbook number 6 from the main carrier Manor Gate, Grace. Just go straight ahead and then turn to your right. Then up the set of stairs here, into the main entrance and look the corpse to your right. The second very powerful throwing pot is the Sleep Pot. When it hits the enemy or the ground even, it will release a sleep cloud that inflicts sleep build up for its entire duration. So it can actually hit multiple enemies and you don't have to directly hit the enemy with it, so long as you draw them inside the cloud. Unlike the freezing pot, this does scale with your arcane, so the higher your arcane, the higher sleep build up. Sleep is amazing for crowd control. The best use are against enemies vulnerable to sleep. An infamous example is the classic Godskin duo battle. If you throw this at one of the Godskin, they'll pretty much instantly fall asleep, taking them out for the entire duration of the battle. I'm not kidding when I say this lasts for a very long time, so you only have to focus on a single Godskin. Most enemies aren't actually immune to sleep, usually only dragons and a few others, but most of the bosses aren't. The thing is, quite a lot of bosses only get staggered by sleep, as you can see from Godric here, he'll get staggered and then fall down just a little bit and get up right after, which still allows you to get at the very least a free hit, especially as a charged attack for nice damage, or of course use the opportunity to heal or buff or cast a spell and so. To craft the sleeping pot, you need the Fever or Fever's Cookbook number 1 recipe and you can find it pretty early, to the left of the third church of America. The way to reach it is pretty simple, so from the church, you have to go up the fallen structure over there, onto the cliffs. So simply ride it, and see the graveyard here, simply loot the corpse atop one of the coffins. The next set of powerful consumables are all perfumes, and I want to start with the one that I believe to be the biggest game changer of them all, Iron Jar Aromatic. This perfume will highly increase all your physical damage negation by a massive amount. With a debuff to your lightning resistance, I have close to 75% physical negation here for example. With such high negation you can easily tank most boss hits, including late game bosses like Melania and Malekath. Most importantly, this item also has an extremely powerful secondary effect, of setting your poise to basically infinite. What this means is, most attacks will not be able to stagger you for the duration of 40 seconds, which lets you both cast spells and attack in quick succession while almost completely uninterrupted. Even healing is possible without being staggered. However, do note that some attacks, especially some boss attacks, will always stagger you no matter what, 
like Melania's Kick or Malekath's Beast Claw that sends your character flying away. The other downsides to this item is that, well, it will make your roll slow, as if you were under heavy burden, no matter your equipment load. This can be avoided, however, by just using the Bloodhound's Step Ash of War to retain fast dodge rolls with high invincibility frames. Because of how much damage you can deal while uninterrupted, however, chances are you probably won't even need to dodge most enemy attacks while under Iron Jar Aromatic, a top tier item for any melee character or anyone that fights at close range. To get this recipe, you must first head to the Auriza side tomb at the Altus Plateau. This tomb is easily reached by just going down the road here, then to the northeast. From the starter grace, go down the path until you reach the room with the little jar enemies. So now turn to your left and drop down this window here, all the way down. Now, you'll probably aggro an imp enemy here, I suggest you defeat them, both of them actually. Otherwise, they'll get in your way later on, and we don't want that. So after defeating the imps, go down the path, you'll reach this water area. Now enter the big door here, careful with the imp, that will try to ambush you. Defeat it, and head straight for the chest, once again careful with another imp that will come from the left. There it is. Now open the chest and let it teleport you. The reason we kill the imps is because otherwise they will attack you while you're being teleported, which can result in your death. Now simply loot the main corpse here for the iron jar recipe. For the second very powerful and almost all-purpose perfume, we have Uplifting Aromatic. This perfume will highly increase all of your damage negation to around 90%, as to easily absorb all of the damage you take, but just from the first strike. It is a damage absorption shield that only works once. Because of how high boss damage can be at the late game, even absorbing just a single strike is already pretty great. And the benefits don't just stop there, however, because besides the damage negation shield, it also increases all your physical damage by 10% for the 40 seconds duration. Lastly, this also works as an area of effect, so it will buff all your nearby allies, including summons and other players during co-op. Honestly, a very powerful item that you should always use before tough boss battles. So notice how our skeletons took minimal damage because of the damage shoot. You can find the uplifting aromatic recipe at the perfumer's ruins, directly northwest of the abandoned coffin grace at the Altus Plateau. So starting from the Grand Lift of Tectus, you first go northwest for the Earthy Gazing Hill Grace, southwest for the abandoned coffin, and then you can reach the perfumer's ruins. Last but not least, I want to talk about the ultimate damage consumable buff from a craftable Blood Boil Aromatic. It increases all your physical damage by 30%, quite a hefty amount for an entire minute. Notice, however, that it also reduces your damage negation by around 25%, so we go from 50 physical to 38. For that classic Berserker feel, where you get more damage at the cost of more damage taken as well. The damage boost is one of the highest of the game. Depending on your build type, you might as well make great use of this aromatic. A good example are shield builds, because most of the damage you take will be easily absorbed by your shield. The same if you have already mastered the art of dodging your way through the enemies, as to not take damage. The recipe for Blood Boil Aromatic is the Perfumer's Cookbook number 2, which can be found at the Shaded Castle. From the Shaded Castle Inner Gate Grace, going straight ahead, turn to your left, up the ladder, then to the right, past the enemies here, and go for this ladder right here. And the recipe will be right at this corpse sitting on the chair, I have already looted it here. Alright, so for the truly last great item in this video, I have chosen the Albinaric Pot, which has a more situational use than the other ones I mentioned. If you like doing PvP, then this is the craftable for you. Whenever you throw it, it will prevent your enemy from healing using his flask, both for hit points and also FP. So if you really want to finish your opponent off, be sure to go for the Albinaric Pot, especially against those pesky players that try to run away. Creating it requires the Glintstone Craftsman Cookbook number 3, that you can find at the Highway Lookout Tower at Eastern Liernia of the Lakes. The closest grace is actually Liernia Highway North, then you simply head northwest to reach it. Go up the first ladder and open the chest right after. 
Alright everyone, so this was it for my ultimate craftables guide. If you found it useful, then please remember to like, subscribe and even consider becoming a channel member or leaving a nice super thanks. And as always, be sure to comment down below if you think I missed something important. Thank you for watching and see you next time, friends.